Why is it so hard to cure tinnitus? If you have ringing in the ears, you might find it both hard to believe and deeply frustrating that there's no medical cure that completely eliminates the sound. Given the fact that an estimated 10% of the population experiences some form of tinnitus, this might seem strange. And if you're personally dealing with the very real distress that tinnitus can cause, it might make you feel hopeless that nothing can be done. Tinnitus doesn't yet have a cure, but it's not alone. Diabetes, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, Parkinson's, and cancer fall into the same boat. But before we talk about why it's so hard to find a cure for tinnitus, I want to emphasize this. You don't need to lose hope. Tinnitus is absolutely treatable. You can train the brain to filter it out, getting a good night's sleep, and get back to your old self. I specialize in what's called tinnitus retraining therapy. And at Treble Health, it's the gold standard for tinnitus treatment. It's really something you should be familiar with because it's changed the lives of hundreds of my patients. After six months of working with us, 75% of patients had a clinically significant reduction in tinnitus. And that data comes from 186 patients in our 2024 study. Before we get to the rest of the video, if you're interested in a free Zoom consultation with a specialist from my team, click the link on the screen. We're here to help you with your tinnitus. All that said, despite the ability of existing treatments to meaningfully help most patients, I see patients who are understandably frustrated that there isn't a 100% effective cure, or even something as simple as taking a pill. In one study, over 52% of respondents said they'd be very likely to try a prescription drug if it decreased their tinnitus even by half. But if so many people clearly want a medical cure like a medication or surgery that eliminates tinnitus, why don't we have those options yet? Well, the biggest obstacle is that there simply hasn't been enough research. In one 2019 study, researchers found that compared to other neurological conditions, the amount of research studies looking into tinnitus was significantly lower. For example, there were 27 times more registered trials studying depression than tinnitus. As a result, there's less research being published about tinnitus as compared to other conditions, with depression appearing in 31 times more scientific publications than tinnitus did in 2017. Despite being an immensely common condition, tinnitus simply hasn't gotten comparable attention as compared with other medical issues. A lot of this has to do with funding. And guys, for example, in the US between 2009 and 2011, the National Institute of Health allocated $200 million for hearing disorders in general, of which just $5 million was specifically spent researching tinnitus, despite its prevalence. So tinnitus simply hasn't been researched as rigorously and consistently as other conditions. So hopefully this is starting to paint the picture a little better, but even once researchers land funding, there's the arguably bigger problem of actually conducting that research. You see, tinnitus poses a unique number of problems when it comes to performing studies. Most simply, research into tinnitus is highly multidisciplinary and requires institutions to have cross-specialty expertise in a number of areas, ranging from auditory neuroscience to psychology, to computer modeling, to bioengineering, or even neurosurgery. This is because tinnitus has many different causes takes different forms and affects multiple parts of the body. The ears, the brain, the jaw, the neck, the psychology. It's rare to find this breadth of expertise in one research institution, even if you look globally. And even if you do have those resources, studying tinnitus treatments can be uniquely difficult, in part because it's hard to objectively define and measure. For starters, it's hard to define tinnitus in the first place in part due to the wide variety of tinnitus conditions and definitions. Working definitions range from the Oxford Dictionary's ringing or buzzing in the ears to research study definitions of the conscious perception of an auditory sensation in the absence of a corresponding external stimulus, i.e. hearing a sound when there's no sound present in the environment. Beyond that, there's the difficulty of objectively measuring the severity of tinnitus. In a lot of medical studies, there are certain benchmarks that can measure the success of specific treatments. If you're trying to assess the effectiveness of, say, a cholesterol medication, 
you could simply measure the amount of cholesterol in the blood. That makes it a very clear objective scientific test where you can measure the change and you can compare that to a placebo treatment and clearly measure objectively did this change the blood or not. One thing that makes tinnitus tricky, however, is that we don't have any objective physical measurements to measure the success of treatments. As a result, we rely almost entirely on patient reporting. This can be imprecise at times as perception and sensitivity to tinnitus varies widely between patients. We have to rely on highly researched subjective measurements of success. The best measurement tool is called the Tinnitus Functional Index, or TFI, which we use here at Treble Health with our patients. Researchers are very clear that we need a 13-point reduction on the TFI to determine if a patient has had a clinically significant reduction in tinnitus. And I've seen so many companies put out data on their website suggesting 91, 95% success rate, but they're not following the most basic instructions by the researchers who created this tool to measure tinnitus. It's honestly sad and very misleading. It's part of our mission to try to educate you on what's really going on and how you can actually find effective treatments and research that works. In our 2024 Treble Health internal study, for example, we saw that six months after working with us, 75% of our patients had a clinically significant reduction in tinnitus. That means more than 12 points, at least 13 points reduction on the tinnitus functional index. That pretty much takes care of any day-to-day, week-to-week fluctuations or things changing a little bit here and there. And it says, no, this is a meaningful change. That means tinnitus has gotten clearly better and the patient's report matches that to say, yes, I'm noticing less sound, I'm less aware of it. Sometimes I'm noticing a a lower volume sound, but regardless, 75% of patients within the six month period noticing a reduction of tinnitus. I hope that gives you hope that there are real solutions out there right now. What's more, there are multiple different kinds of tinnitus which are caused by different subtypes or different factors associated to the ears, the brain, the head, the neck, etc. Some people develop tinnitus as a result of inner ear damage stemming from hearing loss. Others might get it from TMJ, which is the temporal mandibular joint. That's a jaw condition that can cause pain and inflammation, tightness in the jaw. Others may develop tinnitus as a result of life stress or medication changes. My good buddy and colleague, Dr. Golenhofen and I, we have an in-depth podcast where we describe the most common causes and subtypes of tinnitus. And most doctors, frankly, have no clue about this relationship. They may just categorize it and say, oh, it's all tinnitus, but there's very clear, distinct subtypes. It's really important when you're treating your tinnitus to know what is the root cause. To answer the question, why is it there? If you know your why, and you are with a medical professional who can help you find the right treatment that goes along with the root cause, you're in a very good place. What this all reveals is that tinnitus is typically a symptom rather than a disease in and of itself. And what's more, in some patients, it can be multiple subtypes or multiple causes happening at the same time. So most often, my patients will have a slow age-related progressive hearing loss. So there's some cochlear tinnitus in there, but then there is the central subtype that can be related to stress, changes in life events, other health conditions that can put a lot of stress on the body. And then tinnitus goes from a low, almost insignificant level to a real serious problem. So those are two subtypes happening at the same time. And that's a situation of why customizing the treatment to each individual patient is so important. Unfortunately, Customizing treatment is not conducive to applying treatment on a wide scale and explains why we haven't yet seen a universal cure come through as a medication or a surgery. This can cause significant complications when conducting research as well. You see, tinnitus research typically goes through multiple phases. In the early phases, the researchers use a participant pool of similar patients in the early stages of tinnitus most often. Many of these studies have encouraging results in those early phases. The problem is that when you get into the final phase, researchers have to test a more varied pool of patients with different types of tinnitus and in different phases of its progression. Though more recent research 
has tried to focus on testing specific subtypes of tinnitus, which I love to see. It poses a problem of how do we find the specific participants and how do we know what subtype they have. Often the patients don't know and it's even hard to find professionals who can accurately diagnose which subtype the patient has. Most doctors, most audiologists, most ENT physicians just generally say tinnitus, probably caused by hearing loss. Here's a pamphlet, good luck. And that's not what we do here at Tribal Health. The specifics really matter. And when we get into the details of what is the subtype, what can we do about it, what is your specific treatment plan, then the results get a lot better in terms of how you can manage and reduce this tinnitus over time. As a result of the complexity around having the subtypes in the right group, measuring their tinnitus over time, etc., the research phase can sometimes stop because it doesn't become as encouraging. Some of this may simply reflect how complicated tinnitus is. For example, since tinnitus can be a symptom of multiple problems, we have to get down to the underlying causes. In addition, we have to watch the progression of these problems and get treatment as soon as possible. Most things that can cause tinnitus in and of itself may not have a cure, such as hearing loss, but we can treat hearing loss either with surgeries or with hearing devices. Research focusing on tinnitus can therefore get complicated if there are multiple things causing the tinnitus at the same time. In my opinion, people can have improvement in one area, but may stall out on improvement if they have other causes which may affect the research study but weren't particularly addressed. What's more, as we mentioned, the results of most studies regarding tinnitus rely largely on the patient's self-reporting, which might be unreliable at times due to things like the placebo effect or varying levels of sensibility to tinnitus. On top of that, self-reporting typically means researchers are getting a momentary snapshot of the patient's experience, which can be incomplete because tinnitus can change. With tinnitus fluctuations, it's possible for the tinnitus to have moments of feeling better and sometimes not as good, which might change how the individual responds to certain questionnaires over time. Even though those questionnaires do cater for that, there's currently not a standardized objective physical measurement of tinnitus, and that makes it hard to create broad meta-analysis. For example, to pull all the studies together to draw bigger conclusions. This is a crucial part of the research and scientific process at large, but have hope because other fields like psychology don't necessarily have a direct measurement of the brain or our feelings or our emotions, etc. but we do have treatments that work for those conditions. So this all adds up to make tinnitus difficult to study on a broad scale, which limits our ability to gather enough data on new potential cures. But this is no reason, like I said, to lose hope. Despite all these difficulties, tinnitus research has increased dramatically over the past 20 years, especially since 2010, and we're continuing to see important findings all over the world. Recent studies have yielded early promising results for Dr. Susan Shore's device, which provides audio pulses and electrical stimulation from the comfort of the patient's home it was originally tested for somatic or somatosensory tinnitus. Now that's potentially being opened up and being explored. You can check the link in the description of this video to watch my full review of that specific research initiative. Meanwhile, a group of researchers in Sweden expressed optimism recently about the possibility of developing the kind of pharmaceutical treatment so many patients are eager for. While all of this makes it a very exciting and promising time for tinnitus research, the truth is that you can start a world-class treatment right now. I'm not sure how many of you know this, but my team at Treble Health has seen over 5,000 tinnitus patients via telehealth. And they come to us from YouTube or from doctor referrals or from finding us through word of mouth. And if you are looking for a solution to tinnitus, you can get started with our team today by scheduling a complimentary consultation with one of the incredible and talented specialists on my team. All you have to do is click the book a free call image link on the screen to get started. And when you schedule the discovery call, we can recommend what kind of treatment options will treat your specific tinnitus. Even if your ENT has told you there's nothing you can do, even if you've suffered for years, there is hope that you can get better. Click the link on the screen to get started. We're here to help. I've treated so many patients just like you who show me every day that with a comprehensive treatment plan and determination, you can significantly reduce your tinnitus and get back to living a productive and meaningful life. Hope to hear from you soon.